thanks Nikhil for your introduction uh, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody, depending on who you are. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Petroleum Engineer Association to host me to present uh, the today's topic, uh, Petroleum Economics and the Agreement. <clears throat> so you are welcome to attend the first part of this series, and I hope I will uh, deliver what you expect from attending this session. So during the next hour, I will cover the following agenda to give you uh, some basic uh, insights uh, of the of, uh, petroleum economics uh, topic. Uh, so we will cover uh, oil industry business overview. Then we will talk about the importance of petroleum economics. Uh, then we will uh, give a brief of uh, cash flow analysis. Uh, then we will go through uh, some economic uh, model components and we uh, will end up with uh, some indicator and risk handling in our model. So as anybody, uh, anyone would ask himself, what is economic all about? Uh, he will find out that he wants to answer this question. Is it fair uh, product price to invest money in uh, this uh, uh, in this type of uh, industry? Uh, so we have uh, today uh, three given facts that uh, oil price is about uh, $73 uh, per barrel. And we have a world of oil production is about uh, 100 million stock tank barrel per day. And the global upstream investment uh, now is uh, reach about uh, three hundred billion dollars. So to answer this question, uh, we should know uh, all the factors affecting our investment. So we will uh, begin with our presentation today. So the first about is about uh, petroleum industry business overview. So uh, oil industry composed of uh, three main sectors: uh, upstream, uh, midstream, downstream. Upstream sector, which is responsible for hydrocarbon exploration and production, and it is known as the ENDB sector. Uh, this sector has a high risk in the oil business, where petroleum engineer and geologist and geoscientist are working uh, for this sector. Uh, then we have a midstream sector. Uh, this involves the uh, processing of uh, the oil and storage and transportation of uh, upstream hydrocarbon uh, through pipeline, trucks, ships, tankers to the downstream sector. Uh, finally, we have a uh, downstream sector which focuses on refinery and the marketing and sales and product distribution and the trade to end consumer. So how we run our business? We run uh, business uh, through different uh, sectors. First one is oil companies. It includes super measure and measure. Uh, example for super measure and measure like ExxonMobil, Shell, BB, and I. Uh, they are a huge company, invest in all uh, types of uh, sectors like upstream, downstream, and midstream. And for example, we talk about ExxonMobil, uh, we talk about uh, the number of employees exceed uh, 100,000 uh, person, and we talk about net income per year, uh, reach uh, $40 billion, uh, 40 billion dollar, uh, per year. <clears throat> then we have a second type of oil companies, which is independent or uh, jobber. Uh, they are a smaller company uh, and invest only in upstream sector. Uh, example uh, for that, uh, Apache. Uh, then we have the third type is the national oil company. Uh, they are a government owned own the company. Uh, the rule is uh, uh, industrial regulator for, uh, for oil and gas uh, production. Example for that, like EGBC in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, then we have a, a government sponsored uh, enterprise. Uh, they are private company where uh, they buy, uh, sell uh, some uh, stocks for the public, but uh, the majority of the stocks are owned by uh, the government. Example for that, like Petrobras in Brazil. Uh, then we have an uh, integrated service company uh, like Schlumberger, Baker, Halliburton. Uh, they provide a, a wide spectrum of services uh, to oil companies like uh, logging, uh, preparation, cementing, and extra. Then we have a specialized service company like drilling company. Uh, they uh, provide the oil companies with uh, the drilling rigs. Then we have refineries and petrochemical companies, uh, which consume oil uh, to uh, manufacture some, uh, some product like plastics. Uh, then we have uh, 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 transportation and marketing company, which are responsible for uh, uh, delivering the, the end uh, product to the end consumer. So now we will talk about the importance of uh, petroleum economics. So why we perform economics? Simply to justify any activity we will uh, make, uh, like exploration project and uh, to drill uh, development well, we, we, we should uh, perform some economics. Uh, also for value property for exchange or sale. 
third, uh, third uh, <coughs> justification is to make acquisition of a pill loan from bank. You should be there with the sub-economics. Uh, uh, usually, uh, companies uh, uh, use also economics for COVID budgeting and the governmental voting. Also, we use it in uh, lease bidding and workover justification and any equipment to bushes and to vote to invest uh, the progress of the project. We make also uh, economics. So any uh, ENDB project has a unique uh, cycle, uh, which begin with exploration phase, then appraisal phase, and then up with development phase. In each phase, uh, it has some steps uh, and they take some time and some cost. So the first step in exploration, uh, the company or the investor in negotiate uh, to get the permit from the government. And this step may take uh, one year or more. Uh, then after that, uh, the, the investor uh, awards the permit from the government and pay uh, some signature bonus to the government. Uh, this step may take uh, uh, six months and uh, uh, the investor may pay from two millions to one billion as a signature bonus. Then the exploration phase begins with the seismic exploration and the, drill, uh, the first exploratory well, which is wild cat. Uh, this step may take from one to three years and also cost from one million to fifty million dollars. Then after the discovery of hydrocarbon, we uh, go to the appraisal phase in which we drill uh, more extra well to, to, to get information about the, the reservoir and uh, to delineate uh, the reservoir. After that, we develop a development uh, feasibility study and make uh, some tenders to, uh, to have uh, some contractor to, to provide us with uh, some uh, services. Uh, and also we make a development plan. This also may take from one to four years, uh, this step. And we may pay from a few millions to 100 of million. Uh, then we, after uh, after we make a development plan, we, we again uh, have approval from uh, the government uh, to develop this field. Also, this step may take from a uh, few months uh, to, uh, to six months, and it may also we cost uh, a few millions of dollars. Then the development phase uh, begin with uh, with awarding the contract that we made uh, the tenders in a present phase. This step also may take from three to six months, and we may pay uh, some a few uh, millions. And then we develop the field by installing facilities and develop extra, uh, uh, we build extra development wells. And then we bring our wells on production uh, where we get the first revenue. So this step may take also from a few, uh, few years to five years. Uh, and we may pay uh, from few millions to billions of uh, dollars uh, for facilities. So as we see from uh, this uh, from this table that our project is long time uh, project, we may take uh, uh, seven years or ten years depending on the size of the project, and we may pay a few millions to billions of uh, dollars until we get the first revenue. So uh, in our ENDB uh, asset, we have some uh, unique trends. And as we see from this graph, uh, we have exploration phase and appraisal, then development. In exploration phase, you pay only money, so you have CAPEX here, so you have negative cash flow. Until you have a discovery, then you, you begin to appraise this discovery by drilling some extra well. So you pay extra money, uh, so your cash flow increase to negative side. Uh, then you, you begin to uh, develop your field, so you also begin to pay extra money and your cash flow is negative until you begin to uh, install your facilities and uh, your facilities now are ready to receive your oil. So the production is, uh, is uh, now is, uh, is appearing on the curve. Uh, so the cash flow now is uh, converting to from tape up to the positive side because you have revenue now. And as we know, uh, the production have a plateau period. So uh, in, this, uh, in this period, you cover all, uh, all your investment are covered and you have a uh, uh, point where you, you, you cover all investment you made, then you have uh, a few revenue here. Uh, so as we know also that uh, as we uh, produce from the bar, the super pressure decline. So again, the production decline and the revenue uh, decline until the point where you, you should make a decision uh, to make uh, uh, water flooding or tertiary oil recovery. So you, you pay extra money to, uh, to make facilities for uh, enhanced oil recovery and you, you can uh, increase the production. And again, uh, you, uh, you reach a point where you want to abandon your field. Uh, and at this point, you pay extra money for uh, the abandon. 
And uh, uh, as we see from uh, the purple curve, this is uh, the result calculation. In each case, we, we revisit our calculation. And as we know uh, more from the report, we can uh, increase the result. Uh, and also from uh, the uh, enhanced oil recovery, we increase the result uh, all the time until the bond. So conclusion uh, on the oil industry at last 30 years, uh, we can uh, we have a conclusion that the oil industry is a volatile, which means that we don't have a stable condition. We always have recession and uh, boom. So in recession, oil and gas uh, demand increase, and uh, so oil and gas prices increase, and so uh, share price increase, uh, and the availability of finance increase, drilling activity increase, so the risk taking increase also. Uh, and the costs also increase because we have uh, price increase. Then we have the fiscal terms increase and we have stocks increase. Uh, and again, we have a recession in which oil price uh, uh, decrease and the activity decrease again and the share price decrease and the cost of finance uh, uh, increase. And we have uh, some uh, project delay, which force uh, companies to merge together. Uh, and finally, we have oil and gas sub uh, supply uh, decrease. So this process always happen in, uh, in oil and gas industry. We have a recession, we have a boom, and this cycle repeated uh, uh, every amount of uh, years. <clears throat> so uh, how we take uh, this risk in, uh, in handling our, uh, how we can uh, handle this risk in our uh, economic model, we handle it by what is called the boundary scenario. We make uh, uh, sensitivity analysis and simulation analysis uh, and uh, here, as we see, uh, we put our uncertain uh, parameter like oil and gas price, uh, production itself, uh, costs, fiscal terms, and we see its uh, historical uh, uh, trend. Then at uh, this time, we want to predict what happened in the future. We make uh, uh, two scenarios, one for the worst case and one for the best, uh, the best case, using the Monte Carlo technique or sensitivity analysis technique. And uh, the reality will be something in between uh, the two boundaries. So the decision to balance between uh, the risk and the opportunity is not an easy. Uh, so we should uh, take into consideration economic and risk analysis uh, in our uh, strategic management uh, of the oil and gas industry. <clears throat> so now we will move on uh, cash flow analysis. So simply, what is the cash flow method? Uh, cash flow method uh, from its definition, uh, the value of, the, uh, of any asset to the organization relates to uh, its future impact. So we don't see, uh, we don't uh, relate uh, this, uh, uh, this asset to its uh, historical uh, performance, but to uh, the future impact. Uh, this is usually in the form of uh, revenues minus exponential, uh, which we call cash flow. So cash flow is simply inflow and outflow. Uh, the inflow of the project is the revenue. The revenue uh, is equal to uh, the production multiplied uh, uh, one minus reality multiplied by uh, product price. So why we subtract this amount, uh, which is reality? Because this amount uh, is first uh, taken to the government at the first instance. Uh, so the remaining will be the revenue to the investor, which is production multiplied by uh, one minus reality multiplied by the product price. Uh, sometimes we have uh, some infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that another company use. Uh, so uh, the other company pay uh, some tariff uh, for us. So this is considered also as a revenue, which we call the tariff revenue. Uh, the outflow of, uh, of, the, of our cash flow is exponential. We make uh, like transportation and tariff cost, uh, operating cost, which is uh, daily costs that we pay uh, to run the businesses mostly. Uh, also, we uh, we subtract uh, the exploration uh, costs like uh, seismic and exploration drilling. Uh, also, we subtract uh, overheads, which is the uh, business related cost and uh, salaries uh, for the employees. Uh, then we also subtract uh, capital investments like uh, uh, facilities and the drilling well. Uh, uh, minus uh, we uh, less payment uh, any payment we pay for the government like bonuses like taxes, uh, like special uh, petroleum taxes, uh, like uh, in UK, and corporate tax and reality, all of these we subtract from our revenue to get uh, the net profit. So uh, looking at uh, the big picture to know uh, what is the influence, uh, what, what is the major factor that affecting our calculation. 
uh, we begin with uh, our reservoir, subsurface reservoir. And according to our subsurface reservoir, we put our development plan. Uh, and uh, from our development uh, plan, uh, we can allocate our capex and opex. And from our reservoir, uh, uh, the, reserve in the reserve, we can calculate our forecast of production. Uh, so all of these are geologists and uh, engineering data. Uh, then we have account and financial uh, data like costs, uh, which is OBEX and uh, CAPEX, and uh, revenue, which is the production multiplied by the price. All of these uh, input to the, our cash flow model, in which we also consider the fiscal term and taxes in our cash flow, and also the cost of capital, which is uh, uh, from equity or from loan from bank. Uh, until we calculate what's called the net uh, present value uh, to take into consideration the time value of, uh, of our calculation. So as we see from uh, this influence the that uh, the reserve and subsurface reservoir has a major uh, effect on our calculation. So if the reservoir is huge and uh, extended, we can put uh, uh, a huge development uh, plan in which affect our uh, capex and robotics and production. And if we have a small reservoir, we can uh, put small uh, development of land. So now we will go through some uh, economic model component. So each uh, economic model component uh, is composed of uh, eight uh, components. The first one is the production forecast, uh, then oil price, uh, then interest, uh, and we also bought uh, in the economic model the fiscal terms and the uh, OBEX, CAPEX, economic limit, and the uh, escalation and the uh, inflation. So, a uh, typical uh, economic model is composed all of uh, this uh, component that integrate together to get uh, some indicator and uh, to calculate the net present value. So, we'll go through each component now. Uh, the first one is the reserve and the production. So what is the reserve? The reserve uh, simply is the estimated volume of any hydrocarbon uh, that occurred uh, uh, in under the ground, uh, that anticipated to be commercially recoverable from uh, non-accumulation uh, from a given date forward under existing economic condition and by established uh, operating practice and under uh, government regulation. So we have here three condition uh, in our reserve uh, definition. Uh, first one should be commercial under economic uh, condition and uh, to, uh, to be extracted under operating practice and under the government regulation. Uh, so here is uh, the big picture, big picture of our uh, resources. So we have a total uh, oil in place, uh, or not all of these are recoverable. Uh, so we have uh, a small, smaller amount of oil in place that is technically uh, recoverable according to the technology now. And not, of, uh, not all of these uh, technical resources uh, are uh, economic. So we have another boundary here, which is economically uh, recoverable resource. And uh, also we, uh, we divide this economic uh, recoverable resource into group and global reserve, depending on uh, the certainty of our data, technological data and engineering data. Uh, then we have uh, on uh, the iceberg, of, uh, on the tip of the iceberg, we have what's called producing uh, developed, uh, group developed uh, producing the support. So as we see here, as we, we have more data, we, we make the uncertainty less. Uh, and we, uh, until we reach uh, the proof to develop the producing reserve, uh, which is the, small, the smallest size of our uh, oil and gas calculation. So each of these boundary uh, depends on oil and gas prices and the lifting cost uh, and the, the technology available right now. So how we calculate our reserve, uh, there are two uh, methods or approaches uh, to calculate the reserve. One is called the deterministic approach, and the second one is called the probabilistic approach. Uh, in, the, in the deterministic approach, simply uh, the calculation depends on single value, uh, and we divide it in uh, proof and the probable and the possible. Uh, and the 1B is called the probable reserve, and 2B is the more, more likely uh, to be recovered, which include the proof and the probable. And the, uh, the 3D, which is grouped and probable and possible reserve. Uh, for probabilistic approach, we enter our data as a range of data, and we get what is called the probability distribution curve. And at 90% of uh, probability, we can uh, calculate 1P. And at 50% of probability, we calculate 2D, which is probable, grouped and probable. And at 10% uh, uh, of probability, uh, we can get uh, 3D, uh, which is grouped and probable and possible. 
as ultimate uh, as ultimate uh, capable reserve, uh, which is the cumulative production if we have the history production plus uh, uh, 1B, uh, 2B, 3B. So uh, in, in every step in, or in every phase in our project, uh, from uh, defining the prospect, uh, we can calculate uh, some reserve. Then we revisit it uh, when we make the uh, separation and the appraisal phase. We can revisit our calculation of reserve. Then when uh, we produce uh, from the reserve itself, and uh, when we uh, apply uh, secondary and tertiary recovery, we can also revisit uh, our uh, reserve calculation. So in every step, we can uh, we can revisit uh, our reserve calculation. <clears throat> so uh, there are three methods uh, for uh, production forecast. The first one is through the decline uh, uh, decline curve analysis uh, and uh, material balance. And we have also volumetric calculation, and the 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 the, the, the last one is an analog statistics. Uh, this is uh, if your field has no data and you have an offset an offset field, uh, you can take the same data and you can uh, make a forecast for production. <clears throat> uh, second component of uh, our economic model is the product price. So there are some factors affecting our uh, uh, pricing for our product. The first one is the quality of hydrocarbon. Uh, uh, then we have uh, politics, which affect the price. Uh, we have also supply available at the time uh, of uh, calculating the, the, our model, and also transportation uh, surcharge. <clears throat> so uh, depending on the proximity of uh, the market, we can uh, have uh, some extra surcharge for transportation. Uh, usually we have uh, five uh, benchmark, uh, uh, which uh, we uh, we take it as a reference in our uh, pricing uh, our product. The first one is logistics intermediate uh, that uh, used as a reference in uh, US uh, pricing. Then we have the blend to blend, which is the no fee blend, and we use it uh, as a reference uh, in uh, low cost orbit. Then we have the NEMEX futures, which uh, use uh, uh, which use oil price for long contract. Then we have public uh, basket price, and we have energy hub uh, natural gas for gas price. All of these uh, uh, benchmarks, we can use any of one in our uh, calculation. And there are uh, other price points, uh, but they are there to be used. <clears throat> uh, then the third component is interest type, where the ownership, uh, the first one is ownership interest. We have two ownership. We have private ownership, and we have state ownership. In uh, private ownership, the investor uh, uh, bearing some uh, reality to the, the leaseholder, and uh, this reality is expressed as a fixed percentage of uh, production or revenue. And this ownership uh, is common in the United States and Canada. Uh, Over the world, except the United States and Canada, we have a state ownership. Uh, this means that petroleum resources are owned by the country itself, and the government uh, itself uh, regulate. Uh, Man or managing the resources uh, by using what's called fiscal regime. Second type of interest is uh, working interest, which, uh, which is like the partnership. Uh, so if, uh, if, you, if you have uh, two, uh, two uh, companies working uh, together, uh, so if a company, uh, one of them has 50% of working interest, that means that uh, they should pay 50% uh, of all operating costs and capital costs, and they, they would also receive 50% of the, the net revenue. Which depend on uh, subdivision and production agreement. So, what is the physical term? Uh, simply, it is the contract to hold between uh, the investor and uh, the government, which include all uh, uh, all the terms and condition in the contract. Uh, this include the legislation, uh, political, contractual, taxation, and any other element related to uh, spilling oil and gas. Uh, also, in the fiscal regime, we include uh, bonuses, rental, reality, and any arrangement for production sharing uh, in this contract. So we have two objectives here in, uh, in our contract, one for the government and one for the company. Uh, so the company objective is to maximize the value of uh, petroleum resource and uh, get uh, more, uh, more revenue from uh, this resource. And the company objective is to maximize uh, the stockholder interest. 
<clears throat> so this is a schematic comparison between uh, two most common uh, uh, fiscal terms in our industry. Uh, one is called the uh, production share, and the second one is called the wealth and tax. So in production sharing, there's the first uh, thing is the gross production. We uh, we subtract the, at the first instant, as, as we said before, the reality to the government. Uh, then we have what's called the cost recovery rule. Uh, this is typically uh, from 40% to 65%. Uh, in uh, this pool, uh, the contractor or the investor can recover his costs from this pool. Uh, then the rest of the oil, called the profit oil, is divided between the contractor and the host government. And uh, based on the contractor revenue, we pay uh, some uh, taxes to uh, the government. So in this uh, model, uh, the government takes reality plus its profit split, plus the contract of tax. Second type uh, is called the reality and tax. And as we said, the reality is first uh, taken by uh, the, uh, the owner, uh, which may be a private owner or, or state ownership. Uh, then we have uh, <clears throat> the net uh, oil after the deduction of uh, reality. Then we have cost of deduction uh, uh, for the investor. Uh, to get uh, the investor uh, net revenue or, or investor production. And based on that, uh, the contractor uh, pay uh, uh, some taxes to the government. So the government, in this example, uh, take quality and taxes from the, uh, from the investor. <coughs> the fifth component of our product model is called the operating ex expenses or uh, OBEX. So what is OBEX? OBEX is the cost of keeping the, uh, the production uh, system running smoothly. Uh, this includes lease of facilities, uh, platform operation, maintenance, and transportation. Uh, also, export cost, including tariff training, tanker, uh, pipeline, uh, terminal, uh, work over operation and uh, insurance and administration, uh, which is overhead or salaries. All of these are considered as OBEX. So uh, to know uh, how much uh, we pay for OBEX, we use what's called the uh, unit technical cost. We simply divide uh, the operating cost uh, by the production to get uh, the cost per barrel. So as we see from this graph, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the total uh, cost per barrel. Uh, and in blue, we have OBEX per barrel. And as we see in UK, uh, the cost per barrel in OBEX uh, is $21 per barrel, and uh, in Saudi Arabia is uh, $5 per barrel, and in Iran, which is the, the lowest uh, cost per barrel, uh, 4.6. So this is figures should be uh, known uh, when you enter your uh, your uh, your OBEX in uh, the economic model. Uh, then we have another type of expenses, uh, which is called the capital expenses. So what is called, uh, uh, what is uh, so CAPEX? Uh, CAPEX is uh, uh, sublimation uh, wells, appraisal well, uh, field development facilities, or field modification, and abandoned, all of these considered as CAPEX. So again, uh, looking at um, CAPEX per barrel uh, all over the world, uh, we can see that UK has the highest CAPEX per barrel, which is uh, $22 uh, dollar per barrel, and Saudi Arabia has the lowest uh, uh, CAPEX per barrel, uh, which is 3.5. So this is the, this uh, cost of barrel depend on uh, on uh, the majority of the fields are uh, offshore in UK and the majority of fields in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, are insured. So the the cost of barrel uh, here is uh, low. Uh, uh, also, we have the tax uh, in our uh, in our economic model. So what is tax? Uh, usually, any activities that generate revenue uh, should pay uh, taxes to the government. Uh, taxes are usually pay at the corporate level and based on uh, the profitability of the corporation. Uh, usually we use this formula to calculate our tax uh, from taxable income, which is the venue minus uh, OBEX, uh, minus uh, depreciation of CAPEX, minus burden, which is the any cost uh, uh, made uh, before the economic evaluation. This is called the burden. Uh, then we multiply this tax, uh, taxable income uh, by tax rate to, get, uh, to calculate our taxes. Uh, then uh, the fifth, uh, the seventh uh, component is economic limit. So what is the economic limit? It is the point in time in which uh, continue, continuing the operation after this so will be no longer commercially uh, uh, viable to the, the project. 
the economic uh, limit is uh, we, we calculate it from what is called before tax uh, cash flow. Uh, we don't calculate it uh, from after tax cash flow. Uh, we have two reasons to, uh, to calculate it uh, from before tax uh, because usually taxes are, are, are typically calculated at a profit level. Uh, so whatever your project is, uh, is making a profit or no, uh, 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 we should uh, pay uh, uh, taxes as a corporate. Uh, second uh, reason is the decision to continue uh, producing petroleum uh, product doesn't affect uh, the corporate tax. Usually, uh, corporate pay taxes because uh, it makes uh, profit from another project. And looking again uh, at uh, the OPEX, uh, OPEX graph, uh, the economic limit is related directly to uh, the OPEX. And as we see uh, from UK, uh, the OPEX is uh, 21. So if uh, the oil price is, <clears throat> is uh, less than 21, uh, UK should, uh, uh, project should be uh, not making uh, any money. And in Saudi Arabia, as we see, uh, they can operate uh, their project uh, at any oil price uh, higher than $5.5 uh, per barrel. So uh, that, uh, that tells us why Saudi Arabia can uh, produce uh, oil, even when uh, oil prices are low. Uh, then we have uh, the last component is escalation or inflation. So what is meant by escalation or inflation as we use the together to estimate the, how uh, the future uh, uh, product price will be uh, and uh, the cost is uh, uh, reduction in the future. So many companies use uh, these terms uh, together uh, as the same meaning, uh, but uh, usually uh, there is a difference between inflation and escalation. Inflation is usually related to the currency itself due to the politics of uh, the country, uh, but escalation is used to predict uh, the future value of the revenue or uh, cost above the inflation rate. <laughs> So now we will uh, go through uh, the economic indicators. So after we calculate our economic uh, model, uh, we want to see uh, how to, uh, to, uh, to get some indicator from this model. So we have uh, what is called undiscounted parameter. We have uh, five undiscounted parameter. Uh, so this is a typical cash flow diagram. We have some negative cash flow until we reach the maximum negative cash flow. Uh, then we put our uh, our wells on production, and we, again we uh, we can see that the cash flow from from Cape up to the positive side until we reach a point here, uh, uh, which in which uh, we recover all uh, the money we pay, and then we we, we can get uh, pure revenue. So uh, this point, uh, the maximum uh, uh, negative uh, uh, cash flow, this is called the maximum capital out outlay. Uh, this is the first the first uh, undiscounted parameter here. Uh, second one is called the payback period, in which uh, how uh, many years we take until uh, we recover all investment we made, and typically it range from uh, four to seven uh, years, uh, depending on the project size. Uh, the third parameter is uh, the last uh, boost of uh, cash flow. Uh, this is called the terminal cash uh, surplus, and because as we said before that uh, we have uh, some abandonment cost in uh, in our uh, project, so we can. Uh, it is not uh, the maximum, but the last uh, positive uh, cash flow. Uh, we have the fourth uh, uh, parameter of all the profit to investment uh, ratio, which is the uh, terminal cash surplus uh, divided uh, by uh, maximum capital outlay. And also we have what's called cost to find or develop reserve. Uh, this is usually uh, the, the cost uh, we, uh, we, uh, we bought in our development uh, plan divided by uh, growth reserve. <clears throat> then we have another group of parameter, which is called the discounted parameter. Uh, this is after we uh, we take uh, the time value uh, in our model, uh, and we begin to enter uh, the discount factor to calculate uh, our new present value. So we have uh, two groups of discounted parameter. One is called discounted rate uh, specified, and uh, this is why this includes new present value and new present value index. And second group is called the discounted rate right, uh, which is internal rate of return, IRR. So what is net uh, present value? It is the sum of all uh, project uh, cash flow, uh, discounted back to uh, the year in which we make uh, the economic evaluation. So uh, simply, it is the sum of the future value uh, divided by the discount uh, factor uh, to get uh, the present value.
so there is a relation between uh, the discount rate uh, and uh, and the net present value. And as we see, as we increase the discount rate, uh, the net present value of the project decrease. Uh, and as we see from uh, this graph, this is undiscounted. So when we apply 10% uh, discount rate, uh, the net present of the cash flow uh, decreased from uh, 1,400 uh, uh, to 300 uh, million uh, dollars. And as we increase again the net uh, the discount rate from uh, 10% to 20, we, we make uh, negative uh, cash flow. Uh, so for that, we use what's called rate of return. Uh, or internal rate of return. Uh, this is a single uh, discount rate that uh, produces uh, net present value uh, as a zero. So uh, again, this is the relation between the discount rate and the net present value. Uh, the net present value decreases as we increase the discount rate until we reach uh, the discount rate, which make our net present value uh, zero. So this is point called IRR. So for successful project, we should have uh, our uh, IRR uh, greater than uh, hurdle, uh, what's called the hurdle rate or uh, cost of capital. So if you have a cost of capital 10% and you have IRR 15, so this means that uh, your project is successful. Uh, the last one uh, in a uh, discounted uh, group uh, called the net present value uh, index. Uh, so this is equivalent to group by a uh, profit investment ratio, uh, but uh, with, uh, discount, after applying the discount uh, rate, uh, so uh, this is uh, this tell us uh, how uh, how investment uh, are efficient. Uh, simply, it is the, the, the revenue minus uh, divided by uh, uh, the expenditure. So uh, this means that uh, how much uh, dollar we can get uh, if we spend uh, one dollar. So in this graph, as we see, this is the, the BIR, which is undiscounted. Uh, uh, here it's uh, one point four. So this means that uh, for every uh, $1 we pay, we get uh, $1.4. Uh, and as it's counted, uh, if, uh, every dollar we pay today, it will uh, return uh, 0.5 uh, after the, the project lifetime. Also, we have uh, what is called uh, uh, discounted uh, rate of return, which is uh, uh, GROI. Uh, this indicator on the board uh, includes uh, the cost of uh, managing company funds. And uh, it also uses a pointing the project, uh, project with a similar uh, capital outlay. So similarly, this is the net present value divided by the present value of the capital itself, plus overhead on, uh, needed for this capital. So the last part in our uh, presentation today is how we handle risk in our economic model. So what is risk uh, in uh, first? The first uh, risk definition is the process of estimating the probability of the occurrence of any event and how um, how adverse effect over uh, of a specified period. Uh, so risk analysis is uh, our decision making and minimizes the losses. Uh, so we have uh, we use uh, risk in our uh, uh, geology. Uh, so our uh, geological lead uh, uh, always uh, uh, calculate what's called the success ratio. So they put uh, they put the three main factors in, uh, in uh, their exploration, which is the poor and the crab and so on. So. And they put uh, the probability of finding uh, this factor. So, for example, for the poor, uh, they put 70% uh, for uh, the quality of the poor and 80% for the communication with so so. Uh, and for crab, uh, they put 70% uh, probability for crab uh, existing and 60% for crab seal. And for source work, they put uh, uh, as a source work quality a probability of 100 and the source work maturation uh, as a 90%. Uh, then, because we deal with independent uh, events, so we multiply uh, uh, this, uh, uh, these probabilities to get uh, the final uh, success ratio. So, multiplying 0.56 uh, by uh, 0.42 by 0.9, uh, this will give us 0.21. So the success ratio is uh, uh, 21%. So this is an example of risk handling in uh, geological uh, data. Uh, so we have uh, many aspects for, uh, uh, for the risk. We have the first one, technological risk. Uh, this uh, example for uh, risk of uh, grilling problem or not achieving the, the target, or the flow rate uh, is, uh, is lower than expected. Then we also have oil and gas price risk. And as we see, uh, the oil and the gas price always increase and decrease. 
see if we consider it as a huge risk on our calculation. Uh, then we have a project overrun risk. Uh, this is the, maybe due to the session happen. Uh, this make uh, some delay in our project. Uh, so this risk also should be uh, taken into consideration. Uh, then we have a political risk, like uh, risk of civil war or any political uh, disruption which affect uh, the oil price uh, and cause some delay in the uh, of, uh, uh, development phase. Uh, finally, we have also fiscal risk, like uh, risk of introducing new tax by a country or changing the cost recovery mechanism. Uh, so all of these are uh, considered as risk that should be handled uh, in our economic model. So how we handle risk, we, we show it uh, by uh, uh, four methods. Uh, the first one is the sensitivity analysis. Uh, this includes uh, two, uh, two types of diagrams, writer diagram and tornado diagram. Uh, then we have what's called the expected value. Simply it is uh, the probability multiplied by uh, the net present value of which, is, uh, of which scenario we make. Then we have Monte Carlo simulation uh, in which we put all uh, the risk uh, uh, as a range and make the uh, calculation. Uh, then we have a decision uh, tree and we end up with the expected value. Uh, here is an example of a tornado diagram. And as we see, we put all uncertain parameters and uh, we put it at, uh, as a range. So this is the base case. Uh, this is an present value at the base case. And we increase uh, the probability of, uh, of uh, each, uh, each parameter by, by certain amount. We, uh, we 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 always uh, use the <clears throat> 50 percent and 100 uh, or and 122 uh, and 150 as uh, as uh, as uh, as a parameter for for each uh, scenario. So as we see from uh, this uh, graph, uh, the largest uh, the largest effect from this graph is the capex. Uh, and as we see, we have a wide range for net present value depending on the the capex. And the minimum one is inflation. Here's another uh, way uh, to show our risk. Uh, this is called spider diagram. And uh, we put all uh, the parameter, uh, uncertain parameter, and we change it uh, by the same percentage as we, we make in the net diagram. And from uh, the, steepest, uh, the steepest one, we can know uh, which parameter is affecting most. Uh, so in this uh, case, we have a quantity as the steepest, uh, the steepest slope, uh, and we can uh, know, uh, we can conclude uh, from uh, this, uh, from this, uh, spider, uh, from this spider gum that uh, the oil uh, volumes uh, has a major effect uh, in our calculations. Uh, this is the third type of showing our uh, our uh, risk analysis by decision trees. So as we see, we put in each uh, in each uh, case, we put uh, the probability of uh, occurring uh, something, like uh, if we want to drill a well, so there is the three possibilities to, uh, for this well. Uh, it, uh, it could be dry hole or marginal producer or good producer. We put uh, each probability of this uh, event and multiply it uh, until we get what's called the expected value. Uh, so uh, these uh, methods we use it uh, usually in uh, our risk handling. Uh, so thank you for uh, for attending, and uh, hope you you will benefit from attending this uh, this presentation.